Welcome back. Today we're going to do a quick tutorial on understanding compression. Okay, we have the Freedy compressor here opened up by default. The first setting you're going to see is going to be your threshold. All this is is what governs when your compressor kicks in. So for instance, if we change this to negative 12, that means whenever the signal reaches negative 12, your compressor is going to start working and kicking in. If it doesn't reach negative 12 or whatever threshold you set, your compressor isn't really doing anything. Generally. Okay, so the next setting you're going to see is your ratio. Right now you don't hear the compressor doing anything because the ratio is set to 1 to 1. All that means is for every decibel that goes into the compressor, you're only getting one back which means it's equal and no change. So w when we set a ratio to say 2 to 1, that means for every 2 decibels over our threshold, we're getting only one back. So let's say we have our threshold at negative 12 and we're hitting negative 10. That means on we're getting one decibel back, so we should be around negative 11, if that makes any sense. All the ratio is, is the ratio between whatever is going over your threshold to what you're getting back. So if you set a higher ratio, like 4 to 1, every 4 decibels that goes into your compressor over your threshold you're only going to get one decibel back. So that's a heavier compression setting. Okay. So the next setting you're going to see on your compressor is your attack. Basically, all this is is how quickly your compressor grabs onto the signal and starts working. So if you're working with something like a snare drum, a clap, a kick, something like that that's really snappy, and has a strong transient, you generally want a slower attack because that means that that initial snap will get through the compressor before it starts kicking in. So if, if you lower your attack time to zero, a lot of the punch, the snap, and the transient gets taken out just because the compressor is grabbing onto it right away. You might even notice it in my voice right now. So that's generally why you'd use a slower attack time. Just let that transient through. The next setting you'd see would be your release. This is basically how quickly or how slowly the compressor lets go of the signal. Uh, you just gotta adjust this to taste to what sounds good to your ears. It varies between whatever you're compressing. Okay, this next setting here would be your gain or makeup gain. Uh, generally, a lot of people use this to make up for the reduction in audio that happens from compression through your threshold and your ratio. Uh, whether or not you use it is really up to you. A lot of professional engineers I've seen do use the makeup gain to make up for it. I just go by what it sounds like, which is why I think they do too, but uh, it's up to you whether or not you want to use the gain knob. Okay, the next setting you have here is your knee. And all this is is how quickly the signal turns from uncompressed to fully compressed. Rather, not quickly, but how strongly. So just as a visual aid here, I have a free delimiter. I'm going to show you the knee settings, which is going to show up here. Okay, so you're going to see me moving this knee knob. And this is going from a soft knee over to a hard knee, which means that instead of a gradual change in the signal from uncompressed to compressed, you're going very quickly to a compressed signal. And that's what the knee does and you just have to do it to taste. Generally, a softer knee sounds more natural. Uh, this tutorial is getting pretty long, so I will just 
go into a few reasons why you might compress the signal. I fix that so you can hear me again. But one of the reasons might be that the dynamic range, the difference between the loudest peaks and the lowest peaks might be too great for the project you're working on. You might have a hard time making that sit well in the mix. So what a compressor can do is it can reduce the overall difference between those peaks, making it easier to set in the mix for like gain staging. Okay, another reason you might use a compressor is for tone shaping. You know, you can have 20 different compressors all set to the exact same settings. I'm talking about different types of compressors, like different VSTs. They can all be set to the same setting and all sound different. Uh, just because compressors generally have their own character and algorithms for shaping the signal. Uh, it's like being a chef, you use a compressor based on what you hear it's doing to the signal. So what works for one thing, like snares, might not work so well for vocals, etc., etc. And there was a third reason, which I can't think of offhand because I got crazy migraine. <laughs> but uh, this tutorial is getting pretty long anyways, so I'm, I'm going to cut it off here. I hope this helped you understand the basics of compression and why we use it. Uh, oh, okay, I remember the third reason. The third reason is compression can bring something forward in the mix because it increases its perceived loudness. It will seem closer to you uh, just by compressing it. That's a third reason. There's a million reasons for why you might want to compress. Uh, it varies a lot and you just have to use your ears, but that's basically it. Kind of this set off. So peace out and thank you for watching.